I tell people to not do anything out of fear, obligation, or guilt. If something feels like fear, obligation, or guilt, like, oh, I have to go to this event. I don't really want to go, but, you know, I told that person I would go. Then I tell them not to go because you want to, to stay in high vibration and manifestation mode. You want to do things that are exciting, that light you up. So if it's, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And to walk away from the hell maybes. Welcome to Networking Star. I am your host, Jeffrey Boyle. And here on Networking Star, we talk with some of the most inspirational entrepreneurs, mentors, and just thought leaders. Today, I am joined by Rebecca Whitman. She has a lot of things going on. She's a magnetic abundance mentor. I wanted to make sure I said that properly. She's a best-selling author, coach, and podcaster. Uh, she's even rated top seven entrepreneur by LA Weekly. She's kind of a big deal, but uh, she also does, um, she helps women go from burned out to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. Thanks for joining us, Rebecca. I'm so happy to be here, Jeffrey. Well, your mission of helping women go from burned out to balanced, beautiful, and abundant, explain a little bit of the origins of that and, and what that means to you. It started in a way that had nothing to do with coaching. I moved to LA 22 years ago to become an actress. And I had small parts on really big shows like Friends, CSI, and 24. And I had a lot of free time to study with great spiritual teachers that taught me about the law of attraction, people like Abraham Hicks, Michael Beck with Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay. And I really applied that to my financial life. And I was able to make six figures working part time. An area that was very challenging was my love life. And I had a heartbreak after heartbreak. And I ended up marrying someone that wasn't the right fit. And three years after marriage, painful marriage, it started to unravel and I filed for divorce. Right as the divorce was proceeding, my dad was dying. And in one of the last conversations we had, he said, Rebecca, I would like you to write something. And I had no idea what I was going to write. My dad's funeral was on a Wednesday and my divorce was finalized 72 hours later on a Friday. And a few months later, I was sitting across the desk for, I know it was a lot. A few months later, I was sitting across the desk from my financial planner and he said, Rebecca, I know you've lost your dad in your marriage, but you had your best financial year ever with your stock market portfolio and your real estate holdings. You've become a millionaire this year. And I think you should write a book and teach people how you were so resilient. So I looked at my life and I realized that there's seven key areas. I call them seven pillars of abundance. They are spirituality, fitness, emotions, romance, mental, social, and financial. And when you have all seven pillars of life in alignment, you can be, do, or have anything you want. Now I'm married to my soulmate. I'm in the best shape of my life. I've launched a coaching business, a podcast, and a health and wellness business. And I'm I've never been happier. I'm balanced, beautiful, and abundant. So that is my mission is to take other women with me and help them go from burned out to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. Yeah, that is great. And yeah, one of the, the people that you talked about, Abraham Hicks, one of the things that I know in, in studying the material that was put out, they talk about your emotions almost being like your, your GPS, your internal GPS and uh, really making sure that you you feel happy and that you feel that. Explain a little bit about that. I think a lot of the burned out feelings that people have is they just don't understand that these emotional warning signs that you're getting uh, that can lead to disaster, I guess, and depression. Yeah, I really love how they teach that the lower vibrations like fear, doubt, worry, resentment, they are all not going to help you attract the life that you want because life attracts like it's like it's like a, a magnet you know two negative sides of the magnet are just going to repel so if you're focused on negative emotions you are actually going to repel what you want so when you focus on the positive emotions gratitude happiness contentment appreciation 
love, joy, bliss, you are going to attract more of what you want. So the question is, when you are, because it is it is in the human condition, of course, to have fear, doubt, and worry, when you are experiencing the lower vibration emotions, how do you shift from low vibration to high vibration? And for me, the fastest way is through gratitude. Happiness is not getting what I want. It's wanting what I have. And when I am practicing gratitude, that switches me from low vibration to high vibration. So I am a big believer in a gratitude list. I I also listen to Abraham Hicks right when I wake up in the morning. So literally as I'm getting out of bed, I'm putting my earbuds in and reminding myself about these principles of staying in those high vibrating emotions. So I don't start my day on a downward spiral because thoughts catch momentum and when you wake up in a great mood, it just keeps getting better. And if we wake up in a bad mood, it can go from bad to worse. You can like wake up late, spill your coffee, get a parking ticket, get a flat tire, have a fight with someone. Like, so I don't want to start my day in a downward spiral. I want it to go up, 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 up. So I have a morning practice. I have an incredible journal that I want to gift your listeners with, of course, your permission. And I call it my abundance journal. And in the journal, it literally, there are journal prompts there that help me go from negative emotions to positive. And the journal helps me reframe my thinking so I don't get snagged by the lower vibrating thoughts. Uh, Tell, how do you get the journal? Yeah, I'm going to share uh, with you, Jeffrey, my link tree. And in my link tree is all things Rebecca Whitman, my abundance journal, my podcast, my website, everything is in my link tree. Great. We'll put that in the comments and we'll make sure that people have access to that. One of the things that, um, you know, as I, we met via Instagram and you've got, I think over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. And I can only assume that the majority of them are women why is it that that the burnout is so frequent and balance is so infrequent with the people that you work with? Well, women and men uh, create differently. When you're in your masculine energy, you want to exert a lot of force and compete and control and conquer. When women do mm-hmm. that, they create cortisol, which is a stress hormone in the body, and it actually causes burnout, it causes disease or disease in the body, it causes aging. So I teach women how to create from their feminine energy, which is why I call myself the magnetic abundance mentor, because when women are filled up with joy and passion and light, People are magnetized to them. Like you were magnetized to me. You found me on Instagram. I didn't find you. Uh, You were magnetized to that light. So that is a a big distinction in how women create. Now, I have an avatar for women called an elegant warrior. Elegant means they are in their feminine. They're not burned out, depleted, exhausted. They're not overexerted. They're staying in their uh, composure and their grace and their femininity But warrior means you still get to be in action. You're not going to manifest your goals and dreams by just staying at home being elegant. You still get to go out and take action in the world. You just don't do it to the point of burnout and exhaustion. Well, and you know, it's it's really interesting as as I go through all the different content. I don't think there, in, in listening to you today, I don't think there's any question that uh, I can hear so much of the Abraham Hicks uh, teachings and in what you're saying. And as as I read that the first time, and as I went through it, it it honestly just makes a lot of sense as you start to think about if you are aware of your emotions, if you are aware of how you're feeling, it guides us. And I think that those are God given gifts to be able to have those those emotions. It's you know. None of us think that that's crazy to use a GPS to get to get to a location, but somehow or another, some people think that it's craziness to to that somehow or another we have this internal mechanism that guides us to where we want to be. How do you help people become aware of of the that internal guidance system that they have? I tell people to not do anything out of fear, obligation, or guilt. 
if something feels like fear, obligation or guilt, like, oh, I have to go to this event. I don't really want to go. But, you know, I told that person I would go. Then I tell them not to go because you want to to stay in high vibration and manifestation mode. You want to do things that are exciting, that light you up. So if it's if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no and to walk away from the hell maybes because when you show up and you're at an event or doing something out of fear, obligation and guilt, you're not showing up in your best self. You're not going to attract whatever it is you want to attract in life, love, friendship, financial opportunity because you're going to be negative. You're going to be like, "Ugh, so don't even go. Just save your energy, stay home. It's okay to say no. Thank you so much for inviting me, but I'm not able to go. And that's another thing I teach my clients is you don't have to justify, defend, and explain your no. So many people, especially women, think they have to over-explain and justify when they say no, because it's in women's DNA and in the culture for them to be people pleasers. <clears throat> women truly have the disease to please and saying no is like, oh my God, I'm, I'm displeasing someone. People don't even care. They don't even care what your reason is for saying no. I throw a lot of events. I do a lot of virtual summits and retreats and, and webinars. And when someone tells me their reason for saying no, I'm like, I don't even want to hear it. Like, okay, no, you won't be there. That's, that's fine. Well, it's, you, you made me think of even the where I'm at with my wife. Uh, one of the favorite videos that we joke back and forth about all the time is it's not about the nail. That was a viral video that went forever. And I think a lot of times, you know, and my wife and I have been married for 25 years and you would think that we would completely understand each other. But there's, <laughs> I congratulate her. She's the she's the one who's had to stick with this crazy entrepreneur for this long. But, you know, as you know, after five kids and taking care of all of us all the time, I can see what you're saying. How do men better understand these, just these differences and how to better take care of this person that takes care of all of us? Wow. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. That is such a considerate question. Understand that women need to be filled up first. So think of uh, their energy as a cup of tea. If they are well rested, if they have been doing their exercise, their prayer, their meditation, their self care, having social time with their girlfriends, those are things or whatever their hobbies are, those are things that fill them up. And when they, when they start getting burned out and depleted and overgiving, they, they can do it because women are programmed to do that. Uh, but then they get tired and they get burned out and they lose that light and that radiance that you are so attracted to and that men are so attracted to. They're just showing, showing up, but not really showing up in their, in their best self. So yeah, encourage women. Hey, you know, you seem a little stressed. I'll take care of the kids. Why don't you take a bath? Or you seem a little stressed. I'll put the kids to bed. Why don't you go to bed a little bit early and get an extra hour of sleep? Or you seem you seem a little bit stressed. Uh, did you get your exercise in today? Or maybe, you know, I can just take care of the kids and you can do some yoga stretches. Like just realize that for women, self-care isn't selfish. It's actually essential for women to practice self-care. And this is radical thinking because for centuries, it was considered selfish for women to put themselves over their kids and their, and their husband. But I have learned from working with women and just myself that, you know, in order for me to really be of service and to give I want to give from the overflow. I don't want to give from depletion or burnout. Well, you have a large clientele. You have a large following. You have obviously received acclaim for what you're doing. And so I'm sure you're seeing lots of different situations with women. There's no one more important to me in my entire life than, than uh, my wife. And my relationship with my mother is still extraordinarily strong. So these very powerful uh, feminine, just as you call them, elegant warriors are key figures in my life. And now I have a 21-year-old daughter who 
has the ability to just conquer the world. But at the same time, she has all these emotions. She's this interesting combination of my wife's femininity and my my aggressive entrepreneurial behaviors. It's just so interesting to see this this uh, this combination. So I have these wonderful women in my life. Talk to me a little bit again, you know, and, and to the men out there about that self care. My wife now, after having these kids, uh, she now is going into a different area of fitness and and making sure she gets enough sleep because it it affects her so much differently now than when we were first married. How do you help? My, and my wife is a personal trainer, but still with all the different things that we're doing, it can be very difficult to be able to make sure that she does that self-care. How as a man do I... Uh, make sure that my wife understands that I'm coming from a feeling of love when I encourage her to do that rather than a feeling of judgment. As you just said, you know, go take the time to exercise, go take the time for yourself. How do we do that without coming across as being judgmental when we ask them to do that? I think the question that you want to ask them is, I know you're starting a new fitness journey with your wife or with your daughter. I know you're 21 and you're finally an adult and you have your your big goals and dreams. So the magic question is, how can I support you? I uh, recently started an entrepreneurial journey in a health and wellness company. And I told my husband, I'm like, this journey is going to challenge me. I'm going to want to quit a million times. And the way you can support me is to not let me quit because I'm going to want to quit because it's a challenging journey that I've embarked on. And that was the way that I asked him to support me. So you can ask your wife and your daughter, knowing that I know what your goals are. If you, and if you don't know what their goals are, definitely ask, you know, what, what is your dream? What is your goal? What is your vision? And once they say it, say, I love that. How can I support you? And if they don't want you to remind them, hey, go to bed early. Hey, take a nap. Hey, take a bubble bath. Hey, you know, make sure you have your girls night out. Then don't do it. Support them in the way that they ask to be supported and then remind them, when you say, okay, you told me I could support you by encouraging you to go to bed an hour early. And here we are. It's an hour, you know, it's an hour before your normal bedtime. Are you going to, are you going to wind down? I requested support with my husband because I tend to overbook myself and sometimes I don't study my calendar. So I was like, can you support me in, in being better at with my time management? And he's like, yeah, every night before we say good night, we acknowledge each other for what we did that day, which is amazing to receive acknowledgement every night. And then we go over the calendar with each other. So we know, you know, saying it out loud is so important for me to say what I have going on. And I'm resistant. He's like, you told me you wanted me to support you. And I'm like, oh, I hate saying my calendar out loud because it's sometimes it's overwhelming because I do a lot in a day. I guess what you're basically saying is communicate uh, and make sure that you understand what what that person that's so important. And obviously, as a man, um, you're right. My wife's women uh, girls night out is so important. She's enough for me. Uh, but it, it became very, very uh, apparent early in our marriage that though she loves me and I know that she loves me, I'm not enough for her. She has to have those women night out. And we joke around a lot about it just to finish off. Will you please talk to these entrepreneurs that listen uh, and talk specifically to the women? How do you, in as a woman entrepreneur, a woman business person, uh, um, you know, an executive, how do you make sure that you're taking care of all of the different needs in an effective way? I plan my day around two things. I have a morning ritual, which is what I'm going to give to your audience, the the abundance journal. I make sure I wake up at a certain hour. I drink lemon water. I have liquid collagen, which is the fountain of youth. It's also in my link tree if you want to get a discount on that. And then I do my morning spirituality. I have the abundance journal. I do prayer. I do meditation. Then I go work out. And those two things are the first two uh, pillars of abundance, spirituality and fitness. 
And when I have the morning uh, spirituality ritual and when I have my workout, I feel like I can do anything. As far as social, which uh, I love how you said it's important to your wife, it is important for women to have their time with their with their girls, girl time. I have one social visit a week with a friend, so it's not anything crazy because I'm in a really big business building uh, era of my life, but I do include one social visit a week with a friend. Um, emotions, I am aware if I'm in love or above or if I'm in fear or below. And I'm, like I said, gratitude is the, f- the fastest way to go from fear or love. Um, as far as mental, that's so easy. There's awesome podcasts like this podcast. There's audibles, there's YouTube, there's constant ways when you're doing the errands and the driving and the little nooks and crannies of your day to fit in uh, mindset work. It's never been easier. There's just so much out there. Um, And then financial, you know, making time for all my different businesses. So I'm a real believer in time blocking because I have three or four different businesses going any different week and I time block. And sometimes I do power hours And if I don't have time for a full hour to focus on one business project, I'll do, I'm a big believer in the Pomodoro method, which is 25 minutes of intense work and a five minute break. So if I don't have a full hour, I'll do 20, 25 minutes and, and I'm about monotasking. So yes, my avatar is balanced, beautiful and abundant, but I don't do all seven areas of life at the same time. That would be really impossible. When I'm doing yeah. something, at least for the 25 minutes or that power hour, I'm just I'm just focused on that one thing. I'm focused on one goal and one result, and I'm completely monotasking. And then when I take a break, I can you know pet the dog, walk around the block, check my phone, do whatever I want. So what I would remind the listeners is this sounds uh, something I, I definitely even want to share with my wife. We'll make sure that what she shares with us is in the description. And Rebecca, we are so grateful that you would join us. And um, I can understand why it is that you were number seven in, you know, in the top seven of LA and why you have such a tremendous following. We are really grateful for the time that you spent with us. Thank you so much. And I definitely want to continue to support your listeners. So you can always find me the same way Jeffrey did on Instagram at Rebecca E. Whitman. I answer all my DMs. And if you have any questions on anything that I discussed, I would love to support you. Grab that abundance journal in my link tree. And uh, thank you so much for having me on your show, Jeffrey. Rebecca, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.